All right, so this is going to be more of a spontaneous video on the El Ruderai PSA uh, for your yogurt because I keep seeing a lot of mistakes online and there are people that are really missing the big picture and they are still getting just like, just bad results, just bad results. So first and foremost, you must cook your milk to 190 or 180 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so like 83 to 90 degrees Celsius, you must do that, no exceptions, full stop. Open up any single uh, yogurt recipe from any fermentation book, all of them, all of them will tell you, cook your milk. Follow, look at what people who know what fermentation is, and follow their methodology. All right, Wild Fermentation, Sandor Katz, page 112. The first, literally the first words on the page say, heat the milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit to 82 degrees Celsius. Next, Nourishing Traditions by the famous Sally Fallon. Uh, for anyone interested in the traditional aspects of food, we go into yogurt, page 85 makes one quart. Yogurt is easy to make. Neither a yogurt maker nor special culture is necessary. Gently heat the milk to 180 degrees and allow it to cool to about 110 degrees. Next, from The Art of Natural Cheese Making, page 94. For yogurt to develop its best texture, it's making demands it's making demands the maker's full attention. The milk should be cooked slowly to a high enough temperature, 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Celsius, for a long period of time, at least a half hour. The milk must be stirred nearly nonstop. That's way too much. I don't agree, but he's heating the milk. So again, and last but not least, on food and cooking, the science and lore of the kitchen for food science. It literally says page 48, heating the milk. Traditionally, milk for yogurt was given prolonged boiling to concentrate the proteins and give them a firmer texture. Today, manufacturers can boost protein content by adding dry milk powder, but they can still cook the milk for 30 minutes at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Celsius, or, 90, or at 195 Fahrenheit, 90 degrees uh, Celsius for 10 minutes. Usually what I do is I just bring it up to 190 and then I just let it, and then I just cut the heat, put a lid on so it stays hot, so it slows down the cooling process gradually. And then when it's cool, I inoculate. But please heat your milk. I cannot be responsible for the results you are getting if you are not heating your milk. If you are not heating your milk, you are not making yogurt. And I can't be responsible for what you are putting in your body or what you're trying to do fermentation wise. You must heat the milk, full stop. If you don't like the idea that you're heating the milk, you need to then make kefir, milk kefir, or you need to make an actual ferment that enjoys not a, a raw milk, a raw milk process or a different type of ferment, but you cannot make yogurt without heating the milk. It's like step number one. So the important nuance, the only thing that changes between traditional French yogurt and El Ruderai dairy ferment, technically, because it's not a yogurt. Legally, it cannot be called a yogurt, but for simplistic reasons, we call it yogurt just because it has similarities between the two. The only difference is that you have to account for the microbes and what their preferred temperature range is and how fast they ferment. Yogurt has a preferred temperature range of 110 degrees Fahrenheit and will ferment in four to six hours at that range. Almost always. Uh, I've been doing this for years in my kitchen, four to six hours, easy. A Ruderai yogurt has a preferred temperature range of body temperature, so 37 degrees Celsius or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And you are going to ferment it until it sets. pH is a helpful indicator, but you must, you, sh you need to use your eyes and you need to use your brain if your yogurt, if your L. Ruderi yogurt has set, it has a gel and it is not moving and it looks like yogurt, stop the fermentation process and pull it out and put it in the refrigerator. If you ferment for so long that it curdles, what you are doing 
is you are cooking the casein protein for so long that it is curdling and separating into curds away. Please stop fermenting for 36 hours just because someone online has had success with that one time period. I don't agree. Uh, you cannot base fermentation on time. What you do need to do is you need to use your eyes and your brain. You need to say, okay, these are the conditions that I have in my kitchen. The, this is the type of equipment that I'm using. And this is the type of methodology that I'm applying to my ferment. How, and then you apply that and then you watch. And then when the yogurt sets, when the gel, when the gel has been made, when the gel has been made, hang on. When the gel has been made, you then look at the clock and you say, how long has it been incubating for? And then you establish the time that's required for you to make your yogurt. If you are blind to what's happening in the jar, you run the risk of contamination and infecting yourself and having and eating something that will destroy. I don't say destroy your microbiome, but that will not be good for your microbiome and defeats the purpose of why you're trying to do this. People are toying with microbiology and bacteria are not something to, we can play with them, but you have to respect their rules and what they prefer. You have to stop over fermenting to the point where it separates into curds and whey. If I put my, if I put my, Pretend this is uh, inoculated milk. Uh, if I put this into a uh, warm water bath and it sets, so it's cooking. Technically, it is cooking at a very low temperature. This is a low temperature baking experience. It's in the oven baking. Okay, so if you put it in there for 10 hours and it starts to set, good. Keep going and then you you pop you look at it you pop the lid off oh it's still a little bit liquid you look okay not yet you put the lid back on you put it back in and then once you pull it out and it has this type of aspect to it you say stop and then you look at the time and you say this is what this is the methodology that i can use use my fermentation log if you need help with that this is the amount of time required but if you put this in and, and it, 10 hours goes by, not set, 18 hours go by, goes by, it sets, and then 24 hours goes by and it starts to separate into curds away, your milk proteins in that warm environment, they are cooking. You are cooking milk. Yogurt is a milk, is a cultured milk cooking process. You are cooking the the casein and whey with the bacteria and they're making yogurt. If you cook milk for too long, it will separate into curds and whey. You are over fermenting. If you are separate, if you are getting separation, you are over fermenting. You are, stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> stop over fermenting. I keep answering the same question online and I'm going insane. Please, I'm just, I, I'm just trying to be helpful. Use inulin if you want. Use, do whatever you want, but for the love of God, please stop the fermentation process when your yogurt has set. If you keep burning your milk, your yogurt, until it separates into curds and whey, you should throw that out. It has spoiled. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, that is my PSA. Uh, please don't... <laughs> I'm heated. I'm just trying to be helpful. I keep saying, seeing the same mistakes online. And I want people to open... Oh, please open your eyes and look at what you're doing in your home kitchen. When you're learning a new ferment, you check on it often. You have to check on it and so that's once every two hours eat well, you know, for Edward Roy yogurt, I'd say once every two hours, but for actual yogurt, yogurt, if you're learning and it's a four to six hour time period, you look at it every 
30 minutes at 3.30, at, at, four, at 4 hours, at 4.30, at 5 hours, at 5.30, at 6. And you get an idea, you learn what you're doing, and then afterwards, once you know what you're doing, you can then say, I put it in at this time, plus 5 hours, that's the time I will pull it out. And usually when you pull it out and you undo it, because you have the context clues, you can then say, this is, this is right. This is what I'm expecting for a result. And then you can keep doing that as is because you've mastered the technique. But blindly doing something just because a creator has given a recipe that isn't working, please have the wherewithal to have critical thinking and say, this isn't working. I'm still getting separation. I need help. What am I doing wrong? And so, this, so here is my El Ruderai yogurt recipe. Heat up your milk to 180 or 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 to 90 degrees Celsius. Cool it down until it's incubation temperature ready. So that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Put, inoculate your previous batch of El Ruderai yogurt into your cooled milk or crush up your probiotics into a, uh, uh, crush them up and then put them into that inoculated milk, stir the life out of it, uh, to distribute the microbes, put, uh, fill up your jars to the top, put a lid on it. It can be tight, tight if you want, or you can undo it a little bit. Both are fine. Put your jars in a water bath for a very stable temperature of the water bath being 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Put it in the oven, check on it at 10 hours, check on it at 14 hours, check on it at 18 hours, and at 10 hours it'll be liquid, but that's good. You need to see that. You need to see it being liquid because it gives you context clues. Then at 14 hours, you will see it being, oh, maybe a little bit more solid. It's not milk. It's like got a little bit of set to it. Or maybe it's still entirely liquid and you're right before that log face explosion. Then you check at 18 hours. Is it set? If it is set, you are done and you pull it out of the incubation and you put it into the refrigerator. If it is not, in, and then you can double check and you say, oh, I'm curious, what's the pH? Uh, and you can stick a pH strip in there, fine. But in any case, in any case whatsoever, you know, we know, if you watch my channel, watch my channel, we know that casein, the milk protein casein, solidifies at a pH of 4.5. If your milk is solid, that means your pH is at a 4.5. That easy, easy, easy. Okay, then... Uh, at that point, you pull and you put it in the refrigerator and you let it set overnight. The reason why you need to cool it down is because you need to pull the bacteria out of their fermentation range, pulling them out of the temperature range where they actively are multiplying. You need to then let that happen and then let it set and it will, and it will set overnight and you will get a nice, beautiful yogurt every single time. I do want to say that people get really uptight about sterilization. You do not need to be so uptight about sterilization if you have a good method. I am good at making yogurt. You don't need to sterilize your equipment. You clean it. Yes, clean it with soapy water. But never in my life have I need to sterilize my equipment because, because the microbes, because this and that. No, the reason why you're getting separation is because you're not good at looking at your ferment and you're overcooking it and it's going into curds and whey or you're not even heating the milk in the beginning. P please, please use critical thinking as to how it is to make yogurt and what it is that these microbes prefer as a, as a preferred food source, milk, as a preferred temperature range, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pre preferred oxygen availability. Uh, anaerobic environment and then you pay attention to the fermentation time until it sets and then you have mastered the art of making yogurts please if you have questions I'm, I'm <laughs> okay if you, if you have questions that I haven't answered
please ask on the comment section below. Uh, one little gold nugget that I will add for those who, who have watched to the end of the YouTube video, you do not technically need to add milk powder. You can do straight, you can do a milk only l Ruderite ferment, and that is my next video. So uh, please enjoy. I am also getting ready to uh, send a sample of my l Ruderite yogurt to a laboratory to have its yogurt, its yogurt profile analyzed to see the, the bacterial population, the microbial population that is available in the uh, yogurt that I'm making. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please sign, uh, please send your email to my, please go to my website and submit your email so you can stay up to date with that. Uh, those who, and I'll maybe start like a newsletter or I'll start something for those who have participated because I will do a crowdfunding for this experiment. And for those who uh, participate in the crowdfunding, you'll get priority access to the results that I have. And then later on, uh, I will make those results public. And I would like to thank anyone who would be interested in contributing. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it's been helpful because I see a lot of questions online uh, on Reddit and on Facebook and any, everywhere. And uh, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.